Okay, hello and welcome all you Rainbow Warriors. Oh, let me turn my volume down here. Oh, and just in case you guys are wondering, I did put my phone on Do Not Disturb, so hopefully that takes care of any problems. Not that I really get that many phone calls, but it's no fun when they come in and interrupt a live show. <laughs> I don't know how many of you guys were here last week, but 10 minutes into the show and a phone call came through, so... I'm hoping that that will prevent that, but I'm also in the market for a new camera so that I don't have to use my phone for these live streams. So, anyways, welcome to Wednesday. Today we're going to do a double peace sign. So this is a design uh, about six years ago when I was doing the tie-dye peace labyrinth. I was making up over 100 panels to create the labyrinth, and the panels were 10 feet wide and 7 feet tall. So, and I wanted to do different designs on all of them. And of course, the peace sign, since I named my labyrinth Peace, I wanted to have several peace signs in there. And while I was folding up one of the giant peace signs, it came to me to try to put a second peace sign in the middle. And then I even did one where I did three peace signs. All one little one, one medium one, and one big one. So, anyways, I've had a few requests for that, and in my meditation the last few days, I have uh, seen the double peace sign, so I thought, time to break that one out. So, before we jump into that, I always like to show a little bit of gratitude for the previous week. So, I had some new members sign up in the last week, and I even had one sign up this morning, so thank you to Debbie. Casey, and then I'm probably going to mispronounce this. I apologize, but uh, Fihu, F-E-H-U. Anyways, they signed up just this morning, and they're here, so thank you guys. And then I did have some super chats from last week, so thank you to Cindy and Uniquely Yours. And then I'm also wearing a t-shirt here that was a gift sent to me by Wavy Gravy Dye Company, so thank you for that too, so... Anyways, let's just jump right in here. Uh, we're going to start folding this peace sign up. So what I have is a tapestry that's been soaked in soda ash. It's been spun out, so it's just barely damp. And then I folded it in half. And then I folded it in quarters so that I could get a center line here on the, the very middle of my tapestry. That's where I will be folding the peace sign around. So... I do have a few videos on the peace sign. Um, well, yeah, one that I was instructional and one that probably I just did it within the design anyways. Uh, so we're just going to fold up the peace sign in the same fashion. So there are, I like to call it three folds. There's a fold up, a fold down, and then a fold down. So I'm starting... This here is the bottom of my tapestry down here. So my top is facing this way. So if you're doing this on a t-shirt, uh, make sure you have it lined out the correct way so that you don't end up with your peace sign upside down. So from the bottom, first thing I do is I fold up and I usually fold about at a 60 degree angle. Um, I don't usually mark it out, but just so that you guys can kind of see that, I have an angle here that is 60 degrees so what I can do is just lay that right on my tapestry here and then fold this edge up line that up and then there's my 60 degree fold after I get that folded up then I like to flatten everything out well, let me scoot this back a little bit and I just get in there and get all the creases laid down flat so that there's no bunched up areas so that's my first fold up and now this is my fold down so I just take that same edge that I just folded up at 60 degrees and I fold it back down and I just kind of hold the center of the tapestry and I just lay that right along this crease here that was created from the first fold up once I have that, then I kind of still check to make sure that everything is smooth. You can usually run your hand over this here and feel if there's any creases in there. If there are, you'll want to try to get those smoothed out. And then the third fold is to fold down. So I take this other edge of the tapestry, the top edge, 
I fold it down and I lay it in the same place. So all three of these edges are all laying in this same spot here. And then of course it comes down to a nice point. This once again is these creases. I like to fold those back out of the way. So up to this point, the peace sign is folded the same way. Uh, the double peace sign is folded the same way as the peace sign. I do the whole initial setup with my fold up and fold downs. And once I have everything nice and flat and smooth, I usually will go ahead and run my hand over all of the areas that could have a crease in them. And this one here, there is a crease, but it's just because there's that extra layer of fabric. So it's always nice to kind of make sure that that's folded down nice and flat there. And then what I'm gonna do is draw some lines on here. I'm gonna draw a couple lines on that are just gonna be my fold lines, and then I'll draw other lines on that'll be my die line. So I'm gonna use two different color markers just so we don't get confused. And the way that I like to do my partial circle is by tying a slip knot in a string and attaching that to my pin. And then from there, right at the center of the tapestry, I can pinch that fabric down. And like I say, this here is where we're actually going to fold along is these two lines. So I'm going to draw my first line on. So I'm basically just, well, this marker is not very, <laughs> let's get a different marker here. Okay, let's see if the purple one works better. Okay. So like I say, I just pinch the fabric or pinch the string under my finger here and just extend this out so this string here is taut. And then I draw my first line on there. So this here is going to be the smaller piece sign that's in the middle. And I'm going to extend this string out and draw the bigger line on. This one here, I'm gonna go within a few inches. I don't wanna go all the way to the very edge. I wanna leave a spot because after I fold this up, the die line is gonna be another couple inches. So that's something you wanna take into account when you're drawing your lines on is where the die lines are gonna fall in there. And we'll draw those in too. So these are my two lines that I'm folding along. Okay, and I nor normally draw my, my dying lines in, but since I'm doing a double on here, it's going to be easier to see which lines I'm folding and which lines I'm dying. So I'm going to draw two of those in the outer portion of the peace sign. This will be where we actually put our dies on. So I'm just going to go out just a couple inches from this line here. So the green ones are my die lines, and I'll go out to the couple inches past this one and do the same thing. <laughs> All right. And then I usually, once I get done with this slip knot, I'll go ahead and extend this slip knot out because I'm going to use this when I after I get done folding, I'm going to slide that over top of my tapestry to hold things in place. So I use... Okay, well the do not disturb looks like it did not interrupt the feed. It paused it briefly, but I was able to turn it off. So this is just one more reason why I will be looking for a new, another camera that I can do my live streams with. So that I don't have that. I usually don't get that many phone calls. And now two weeks in a row I've got phone calls during my live show. <laughs> okay. So once again, I like to lay this down so that the, the three folds are away from me. And on this side we have just a single fold over here. 
So these are where I folded all of those edges onto. And this here also is going to be the center of the peace sign and the two legs of the peace sign. We're going to fold all of that out of these three edges here. So what I'm going to do to start with is I'm going to fold along my first fold line, which is the, the purple line here. And I'm just going to do just little short pleats on this. And the main thing is you want to make sure that as you're folding this up that you're not pulling this top edge back. Uh, you want to make sure that you're grabbing all of your layers underneath here and keeping them all nice and even. If Sometimes you can pinch and it'll slowly walk this top edge back like that away from this edge. If you're doing that, then your peace sign is going to be misshapen. You want to make sure that all of your creases stay nice and even on this outer edge here as you fold this up. And also, as I'm getting close here, I can feel this here is where the layers are a little bit thicker because I did the fold downs on here. So I'm making sure that as I come up to that, that I pick up all of those layers underneath. Like I say, it just makes a, a thicker fold there. So you just make sure you pick up all of those layers. And I'm just trying to keep this lined up as straight as I can and keep this fairly flat on top. So making all my pleats the same height. Okay, so I got my first fold done here, and then I, like I said, I use oh, I use my kite string, the little loop that I had here. You could also just slide a rubber band on there, or however you like to band it up. But that's where I go ahead and tie my first line at. So I just tighten that up, hold that in place. And then this here is the trickier part. I'm going to pick up, I make sure that all my folds are still in here. This here is those three layers. So I'll pick it up right here down at the point to make sure that I have all of them held in place. And then I just kind of bunch up a little bit in my hand here so that I don't lose those folds. And then what I'm going to do is right here next to the where I tied off at. I'm just going to push that down flat and then create my first fold. So I'm just twisting the fabric so that this lays up and then I can lay a pleated fold down. And it should be fairly in line with the line that you folded and tied here. So right next to this purple line is where I am lining these folds up here and you just want to just keep folding down like I say I just keep a pinch on this to make sure that I have all three layers in there so this one is a little bit tricky but once you get it down like I say this will this is for your peace sign but right now we're folding the smaller of the two peace signs in the middle here so once you get this fold down hat then your peace signs are going to be awesome okay now I'm going to go over uh, a couple inches so here I did about two fingers widths so on the other side of that purple line I'm going to go two fingers widths so my fold line is the purple one it's in the middle so there's two fingers on either side of that that's going to be the whole width of my peace sign. So you could make that wider or you can make it narrower. But the purple line is right down the middle of that width there, if that makes sense. So after I wrap a couple times there, then I wrap back a little bit just to kind of hold this in place so that doesn't un unbunch there. So I'll wrap around just kind of loosely. I'm not pulling that too tight. I just want it to kind of hold in place. Then I wrap around the center again. And now I'm going to wrap the string out to the green line. The green line is the one that we're actually going to die along. As well as this one over here. So let me draw this line in too. So these are my two die lines. Now. And I'll draw those same lines on the back side. And like I say, the purple line here, that was just where we're folded at. We don't need that one anymore. These are the two that we're going to focus on. 
So once I get that wrapped up here, then I usually will wrap it back to the middle and tie this off and cut the string. So there's the initial piece sign in the middle, the small one, and now I'm going to tie another slip knot, spin that one out a little bit bigger, and now we're going to fold the outer piece sign. So I once again, I'm going to make sure that all of my creases are still lined up nice and flat here, and that I don't have any extra folds in there, and that my three layers are still lined up nice and flat on this edge over here. And then once again, I'm going to fold on this, well, this looks pink more than purple, but the pink or purple line is where I'm actually going to fold my line. I'm going to do the same thing. And just once again, making sure that you're picking up all of your layers underneath here to get that pleated nice and neat. And then I can feel that I'm coming up this here is where I have the extra layers in there where I folded that first part up and back over this here. So you want to make sure when you get to that little bump up that you grab all of those layers underneath. Because that's a lot of times that's where you can kind of mess up. You can not grab all the layers and then it starts pulling funny on here. So that's the thing where you want to be aware. And after that, like I say, the folds are thicker, but you can just line them up just the same way. And this is one that just, it just takes time and lots of practice. I folded many, many peace signs over the years, just getting this fold down. And there were times where I even, I would fold them and then untie them and refold them rather than dye them because I just wanted the practice, the actual practice of folding them up. And once you folded a bunch of them, then it just becomes easier and you kind of can sense how it's going to come out. So now I'm just using my slip knot that I tied on there to hold that in place. I usually wrap it around one time and then set that back out of my way. And now this here is a little bit more awkward, but we're gonna do that same thing. We're gonna take these three folds here, because like last time we had the point from the center that we folded down and lined up right along that purple line there. You can see my purple line is here and all my folds line up right next to it. We're gonna do that same thing over here. So I'm just gonna pick this whole edge up and kinda, I usually will kinda boots this out just a little bit so that I can get a hold of all of these and like I say I push down right here and then fold that first edge up and then I'm just doing pleated folds laying those three layers here remember there's three edges there laying them right next to that purple line there And this might be one that, like I say, if you just keep practicing it, you'll get it down. But once you do, then you can go on and try to do the, the triple piece sign. The one that I did was on a 7 by 10 foot panel, so I had more room to work with. Okay. And now this one here is a little bit tricky. Just because this center part, this here is the inside of the peace sign. It wants to be all bunched up here. So what I'm going to do now is tie this off. And then I'm going to draw my line on of where I'm going to put my die. So once again, we're going to go about two fingers width on either side of the the purple line here so I just try to fold this edge out as flat as I can and like I say it's bunched up right next to this other piece sign here so I'm just going to fold that down as flat as I can 
and then I'm going to wrap underneath and tie this off right there. So that's on the other side of this peace sign here, or the purple line, the fold line. And then I'm going to gather the rest of this up. Make sure these are all laying nice and flat in here. And I'm going to wrap this around and tie it the rest of the way off out here at this outer green line where we're going to lay our die at. So I wrap that around a couple times. And then I bring it back to the center and tie it off. Let's see, we're doing pretty good on time too, so I'll cut that one. And then like I say, the the other line that we're going to draw on here, I want it to come right down to the other piece sign. So this one here, you have to kind of draw it just a little bit crooked. So I'm going to go over to about the, between the second and the third fold here on this line. So this here is just kind of arbitrary where I'm picking to fold down and then I'm going to bring it down to this point here. So that's just folding this here is my two die lines here and these are my two die lines there. And there's going to be just a little bit of space where this peace sign comes down and the lines come down and join up with the other peace sign. So I'm going to flip this over and draw the same lines on the other side. And these outer lines are easy because I'm just putting it right where I wrap the string at. But on this one, we're going to come up right to about there. So I'm bringing this line up just a little bit at an angle. Just because I couldn't fold this edge completely flat like I did with this point here. When I was doing the small one, I had a point and I just folded it off. This one here, there's a bit of a gap. So that's why I'm drawing this line out a little bit to the uh, out weird instead of straight across. And hopefully that'll come across in the, the finished result there. All right. And then this last bit here, you could twist some spirals, you could pleat it up more. I'm just going to scrunch it up and dye it in uh, darker blue colors. I think I'm going to dye the peace sign in, I think the first one in purple and blue. The second one I'm going to dye in green and fuchsia. And then the outer parts here I'm dyeing up in a couple shades of dark blue. So the rest of this we're just going to scrunch it up. And then I'll get some gloves on. We'll start putting some dyes down. So how's everybody doing? I couldn't chat with you guys much or even look at the feed because I just wanted to make sure I stayed on track with the explaining this fold because it is kind of a complex one. So... Let's see. I think my mom's in the house and she said that they were having nice weather in Pendleton. Our weather's not too bad. I think we're in the, the very low 60s here. We got some big fluffy clouds, a little bit of blue sky. So the weather's not too bad, but I think we're heading into cold weather. So we're slowly wrapping things up here in Oregon, getting ready for winter. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Let's scoot this forward so I can see what you guys are talking about over here. Okay, we're about ready to tie this off. And ultimately, this would probably do better if I set this aside and let it dry for a couple days. Just because of the extra layers that I have in here and such. But I've dyed peace signs barely damp for a while, so... We're just going to go for it. I'll put a towel underneath to help soak up the excess liquid. Let's see. I've been looking forward to this day. To this all day. My day started around 4 a.m. It's been a long one. Oh, yes, it has, Austin. Uh, it's been raining in Florida. 
beautiful in Koei Rup, Australia. Hi, Penny. Nice to see you. Uh, let's see. Idaho's check it in. All right. Let me first off get my towel laid out here. I like to have a clean, dry towel underneath because it just seems to help soak up some of the excess liquid. And just to me, it almost feels like it helps pull the dye down through. Um, if 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 you, I was dying on a rack, some of that liquid might try to drip out, but on the table, it tends to sometimes pool up underneath and almost uh, stops the dye process from soaking in. So on some of these where I have multiple layers, I like to put it on a towel and that just helps draw that moisture all the way through. Let's see, it's comfy, mildly chilly in Michigan, about 53 degrees. Let's see. Southern Cal, still hot. Low 90s, very sunny in West Texas. Yeah, we got some nice weather around and we got some bad weather around. Who knows? Oh, yep, on a new towel. I had to go into Goodwill the other day and found a package of these towels and that's how I like to buy them just buy them cheap used and they soak up the dyes nicely okay now I'm just kind of pushing some of these creases down inside that's what I like my cuticle pusher for it I can move the fabric around without ripping it Sometimes the fingers just don't get in there where you need them to. All right. And on this one here, I haven't been using thick dye on any of my stuff, but this one here, I, I like to have a, a nice line on the outer edge. It doesn't always have to be solid. Uh, the thick dye doesn't soak in as much, but I still like to have something on there. But you could certainly just dye the peace signs with regular dye. And all the rest of my dyes are just regular. The black is the only thing that I've thickened. And for this one here, I just used the, the powdery stuff from Amazon and blended it up, chilled it, and then mixed my dye. And I do have a video you guys can look up on that. Okay, so I'm going to start dyeing. Let's see, me. we'll get up here on this outer edge, or the inner piece sign. Yeah, and I didn't thicken this one as much. I wanted to make sure it still soaked in. I just didn't want it to spread too much on me. But if you want to, you could certainly just go right for the dyeing. And now this here is connecting the, the the big piece sign to the small piece sign. So that's what it's going to do. It's going to go down and hopefully bump right into that other piece sign there. Alrighty. Now I'm going to use my cuticle pusher. Uh, a lot of times when I'm using the thick dye, the cuticle pusher just helps to press that dye to get it to soak in a little bit deeper into the fabric. We're going to put another layer of thick dye on and then I'm going to flip it over and dye the black on the other side because I don't want to take a chance that I lose track of my lines that I drew on there. This way I get the black in the same place on the top and the bottom. 
And then we'll start in and dyeing the rest of the colors on here. Twenty four here in Fiji. Let's see. <clears throat> Okay, and I think I'm going to pull it off of this towel for just a moment and just apply the, the black dye to the back side here in these same areas. Normally I would do all the dyeing from the top, but like I say, this line here is the one that I didn't want to lose as it connects down to this other peace sign. I've kind of been playing with this double peace sign a little bit, just trying to get it to connect up right. Sometimes I bring it down in the pegs, it looks like the legs don't actually touch the inner peace sign, and that's what I'm trying to achieve here. So, just trying something a little bit different this time. You guys get to once again see an experiment as I perfect this double peace sign. Okay, now I'm going to flip this back over. That I have one layer on. I'll probably put more layers of the black on later on. But for now, I just wanted to get one layer on there so that I had the black the same on the top and the bottom. Now we're going to start putting the rest of the dyes on. Okay, I think we're ready here. Start adding some colors in. So like I say, this first peace sign here, this here is the inner part, and then this here is the actual peace sign. And I think we're going to go in turquoise for the peace sign itself. And that looks like a watered down version. Let me add some more full strength just to darken it up a little bit. Beautiful day turned to pouring rain. Where did our sun go? Oh no. Yep, that's that's Oregon for you. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. We got some sunshine here, but we still have some clouds out there. So it wasn't us. We didn't take your sunshine. Okay, that looks a little better. So I'm just going to die from the top side and just keep applying layers to let all this dye soak through. But I usually try to apply just one layer and then move on because if you apply too many layers of the same color before you've applied other, then that layer is going to want to spread sideways instead of just down, which that's what I want. I want it to soak just down into the fabric. This here is plum, and I think I've lightened it up a little bit also. So this is the inner part of the peace sign. And 
And then we're going to do green for the big peace sign. So like I say, once I get one good layer put on there, then I move on to my next color, and then we'll just keep repeating that, just keep adding more dye. After I get all my colors laid on, then I'll probably try to start answering some questions here. So the way to ask me a direct question is to type it in all caps, and then Julie, our moderator, she will write it down and bring it out to me so I can answer your questions. The all caps just helps her find it. Somebody told me also that if you put either the asterisk or the uh, hashtag next to your comment, that it will highlight it in some fashion, but I haven't tried that, so I don't know if that works, but I at least know that all caps works. And that just helps let me know or let Julie know that you're asking the question of me. I do appreciate within the community you guys talking and answering questions among yourselves. We do have some people that have been here for a while. And then we have some new people. So it's always nice to have a, a sharing community that helps each other out. But I will be answering some questions once I get my first layer of dye put on here. I think I'm going to highlight this outer edge with some turquoise just to make it glow. All right. And then this here is sapphire and I also mixed some turquoise in with it because I was getting low on my sapphire and I needed to finish out a project. Uh, so I wanted to extend my my dark so it's not quite just sapphire it has a little bit more Turquoise in so it's a little bit lighter of a blue than normal sapphire would be But it's still a nice dark blue, which is what I was going for for this And then I'm going to put cobalt over top of this Just to add some texture in and contrast I love contrast within tie-dye that's the perfect place for contrast. Alrighty. So, Julie, if you have some questions for me, you can bring them out. Oh, oh, that's fine. I was just letting you know I was getting to that point where I could answer some questions oh, as I play yet, new layers on. All right. Well, let me read one question. Uh, can I buy a couple of designs that I request on shirts? Various sites. Uh, let's see. Okay. So somebody's wanting to buy uh, some custom orders from me. Um, that's something you can send me a message and we can discuss it. I'm not really doing custom orders at this time as I try to keep up with the videos and the questions. I have done just a very minute amount. If Sometimes if a custom order fits in with a video that I'm doing, I'll add that in. Or sometimes if a design just really speaks to me. So if you want to send me a message, I can put a link down here. You can either send it through my store or through uh, Facebook. If you click on this link I just posted here, that will show you all of the different places that you can contact me. Just scroll down to the bottom of that list and you'll see various ways to contact me. 
you kind of talk about what it is that you're looking for, then I can kind of get you a better answer about whether I can do it or not. But I do appreciate that, wanting to, to buy directly from me. Uh, at some point, I would like to get back to taking custom orders, but I also have so many projects of my own that I want to work on and also do these videos uh, for you guys. I really do feel guided to do that, to share my knowledge. So I'm going to try and find a nice, happy mix in there. I do have a bunch of uh, t-shirts and stuff in my store, so... Anybody that is wanting to buy something directly from me, it might not be a custom order, but you can just go to my store. Uh, and there is a link in my launch links where I just posted. But also, if you just type in uh, mrtideye.com, you will find my store that way. That's a shadow. Looks like you're about to put your shirt in the dye puddle. Oh. <laughs> nope. Yeah, it's just we didn't have enough bright sun, so I turned on this extra light, and I think it is casting shadows. Let me see if I can change that around a little bit. Maybe that helped. Okay. So, let's see. What do you think about the all-in-one tie-dye kits? Um, they have so many different types out there. I personally have not used them. I have had seen, <laughs> I have seen a lot of pictures that people have sent me that have used the kits, and some of them have the results been good and some not so good. But I don't know for sure if it was the kit or if it was the process that they used. Um, I do think there's some good kits out there. The ones that I would go for are, um, if, if you find one that says one step, more than likely the one step kits means that the soda ash is mixed in with the dye powder in your bottle and you just add water to it and shake. Those ones there, if you're going to get a one step kit, I would hold off on mixing your dye until you have everything tied up. Because once you add water to it, your dyes are active and you're going to get the best color results using those dyes up within a couple hours. Um, if you have one that comes with uh, soda ash, then that usually is not a one-step kit. It's one that you're going to mix up your dyes and your soda ash separately and you're going to soak just like here. So if you found one of those, I would say that would probably be a good kit to buy. But like I say, I personally, I haven't used any of the one-step kits, so I can't speak to how good any of them really, truly are. Okay, so I'm getting some good dye saturation uh, here in my blues. I still need more green in here, more fuchsia. My turquoise is looking fairly well. I'm going to add another layer and another layer of purple, but I'm thinking that I might be close to being able to flip this over. So... That's what I like to do. I, I put the towel under there, and I think that really just helps draw that dye through the tapestry and, of course, then down into the towel. But it's doing that by pulling the liquid through. So I'm going to add another coat of all of my colors, and then we'll check that bottom again. So, yeah, the one-step kits, some of them can be good. Uh, they're just some of them you need to be more careful with like I say the mixing your dyes and then also I've heard some people say that on the one step kits it says to leave your dye sit for 8 to 12 hours if you leave them sit for longer then you're going to get better results also uh, a good batch time is 24 hours at 70 degrees Fahrenheit I prefer to leave mine for 48 hours and I add some heat to mine. So in the summertime, I stack these tubs that I put my t-shirts in out in the sun. They do have a lid on it so they're not in direct sun. And in the wintertime, I stack them in the back bedroom next to the heater vent. So they're getting some nice heat on them. So the heat and the extra time is going to help the dyes set up better. You'll have brighter colors. So. Those are my recommendations on the all-in-one tie-dye kits. 
the thick water store better chilled. I just left. Uh, I just left it in my basement. Uh, yes, I do believe the thick water will stay longer. I know that the the dyes. I have mine around for two to three weeks at room temp, which here in Oregon is somewhere between 65 and 70 degrees. But I know if you store them in the fridge, they last longer. I would assume that the same is true with the thickened water. I think the, the main issue with the thickened water is that the urea even longer. So yes, I do recommend storing the thick water in a cooled area. Also, it's recommended before you mix the thick water into thick dye that you let it cool completely because it will thicken up more as it cools. So since I wanted to use mine, I mixed it up this morning and then I put the little cup of the thick water in the freezer and I kind of stirred it a few times and after, I don't know, a half hour, 45 minutes, it had cooled down enough and then I mixed you know, my black dye, but I could check the consistency of the water to make sure that it was correct. Because once you add the dye, if it's not the right consistency, then you have to try to add more powder and blend some more. It's easier to add the, the to adjust the thickened water before you've actually add, added dye to it. Sorry, I can't seem to talk right now. <laughs> okay, we're going to add some more green here. see here oh and somebody said happy 30th live video yes thank you it's hard to believe it's been 30 episodes of this and i i guess technically since i did have a video each week i it was consecutive but i did have one week that i was on vacation and i prepped a video and did a video premiere but I think that counts. I was I was here live. I might not have been doing the actual tie dye live, but yeah, thirty episodes. That's pretty crazy. But we'll keep on doing it even after this shutdown lockdown is over with. I'll try to keep, continue doing these. I'm trying to get more videos made up. I missed my Monday video, but I did shoot another video. Did I do two? Maybe two videos. At least one. So I will have one up for this coming Monday. And then, of course, I'll have my Friday video where I reveal this one. And I just keep going back over this the same areas, just layering the, the dye in there and... Having each of the colors on is just going to help the dyes soak down through rather than wanting to spread. So I always like to apply when I'm doing designs that are have specific lines on them. I mean, if I'm doing a scrunch, it's not as big of a deal. But this one here, I don't want my peace sign spreading around. So I like to do all of the colors first off and then, let's see, I think I'm going to go with cobalt over top of that. And I think that was the last... This is the last coat. I think I should have good saturation now. So that will give me a little bit of texture on the bottom. I'm going to peek at this. Oh yeah, that's looking good. I think I still need some more fuchsia and more green. but And the turquoise looks good. Okay, well, I'm going to tap on this a little bit, see if we can get this dye to soak all the way through.
let's add another layer here. In fact, let me use the bigger bottles here. Can't wait to try this double peace sign fold. Thanks, Carl. Peace, love to everyone. Thank you, Uniquely Yours, for the $20 super chat. Much appreciated. And I wish you success on your double peace sign. Like I say, getting that, that second fold in there is the trickiest part. And you might just practice that a couple times if it's not feeling right before you actually put your dies on. But yes, this is this is a fun one and it just looks looks magical or something to me. People wonder how I got the, the peace sign in the middle there. Okay. Let me take a peek here and see if we're ready to flip. Okay. Now I can start to see my, my fuchsia and my green coming through. So I think I will be ready to flip this over. I'm going to just fold this down. Okay. So now I'm going to add another layer. I had only put one layer of the black on this side so I'm going to add another layer just so it can soak in some while I'm dyeing the rest of this <laughs> yes I love it when things come together and, and look like something else and this definitely looks like a peacock doesn't it Okay, let's start with our colors again. So I'm going to go up here. We're going to add a layer. That's a nice thing. Once you get the colors to come through this far where you're seeing it, usually one layer on the bottom side is good because it's already gone through all the layers to show up like this. If, it, if I only had it showing up in just like one little spot, then I might make sure that I'm still putting a second layer on there or maybe I wouldn't flip it as soon but this here is coming through really nicely all the way along so it really tells me that my saturation in all of the inner layers is good and then this here is my glow outside the peace sign this is just sometimes a personal preference just to add a little bit of extra shine and who doesn't like to add a little bit extra shine in the world? I do that all the time. I wear my, my rainbow clothes out into the world. Sometimes they match up pretty nicely, but sometimes my pants and my top contrast greatly. <laughs> I was in Walmart yesterday, and I didn't hear the conversation, but I could hear the nod. <laughs> There was a man and a woman in there, and they had a baby in the cart. And I walked down to the end of an aisle, and I could just see the look in his face. And I kind of turned to look at the shelf, but out of the corner of my eye, I could see him nod to his wife and nod towards me. <laughs> I was a giant rainbow. We were in a little town, so I think it might have scared him a little bit. <laughs> But anyways, most people, they, they love my bright clothes and they'll comment. I get lots of compliments on my rainbows out in the world. But I do whatever I can to try to bring a smile to somebody's face. Just lighten up a room. And what better way to do that than to wear some bright rainbow clashing tie-dye. That's just how I roll. Alright, I'm going to open this up just to make sure. Yeah, 
So I got some lighter areas in there, but that'll just give me a little bit of texture. So I'm going to add, that's the other thing, I can kind of push up some of that extra fabric that's crumpled in the middle of the peace sign. Just to make sure on this last little bit that I get good saturation. You can also squeeze that fabric, but you got to make sure you wash your hand afterwards. But anything to get that dye to just soak in a little bit more, whether I tap it with the cuticle pusher or I squeeze it with my hand. And like I say, putting it on a towel, that's another thing that really helps. Let's see. Oh, we're going to put some more sapphire out here. So who else wears bright rainbow clothes out into the world to try and brighten the place up a little bit? And do you get compliments? Do you get stares? I get a little bit of both. I was even in an airport traveling. I don't. I think I was maybe in in Texas, but I don't remember for sure. But I was standing in the line waiting to turn my ticket over. And I could hear the distinct sound of what a cell phone makes when it takes a picture. <laughs> I turned around and the person behind me tried to act like they were just looking at their phone. They weren't doing anything. But I'm pretty sure they took a picture of my brightly colored rainbow pants that I was wearing. Anytime I travel, I love to wear bright rainbows. <laughs> Let's see, I wore my rainbow scrunch shirt today. Awesome. Deja vu says both. Compliments and stares, of course. Wear tie-dye everywhere. Yes, both. Stares and compliments. Wear it every day. Looks like I might be trying to tie-dye Christmas stockings soon. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, my conservative sister lives in a conservative town, and she wore a shirt I made to her store and got several compliments. I always get compliments, but I wear my tie-dye. Oh, that's awesome. Yes, it's nice to have that, that feedback. But sometimes I like to have just the just the, the, the stares, people not believing that I'm wearing head-to-toe rainbow. And then when it's cold, then I put my rainbow hoodie on. You guys have seen the one here. <laughs> ah, fun times. All righty. All right, let's put some cobalt on this outer section here. I think we're getting close to wrapping this one up. Starting the auction soon, and then I will be answering some questions. So if you guys got any more questions, put them in in all caps. Julie will find those and bring them out to me. All right. One more coat of dye just for good measure. And I'm just going to tap this one in a little bit. $10 super chat from Felicia. I can personally attest that you have created rainbows in this world. Thank you from the newbie tie-dye artists. Or newbie artists. Oh, you're so welcome and thank you so much for the super chat. I certainly appreciate those. It just helps any support that I get for my channel. Helps keep me going and making videos. So, thank you, thank you. Namaste. Uh, let's see. And there's other ways that people can support my channel uh, without spending any moolah. If you guys let the, the videos or the little ads run before and after the video, 
I don't like them in the middle middle of videos, so I don't put them in mine. Uh, there might be the little pop-up banner ads. Those I can't stop, but as far as a mid-roll ad, I don't put those in my videos. But if you let the one run before or after or both of those, then Google pays YouTube, and then YouTube has to share that money with me. So you can support me by making Google pay me. How about that? Um, I think I'm about done here. Let me put one more squirt of turquoise. And then I think we're going to call that good. So we got the tapestry, the double peace sign. We got one here, one here, the outer edge in blue. I'm going to let this sit and batch for 48 hours. And then I'm going to do the reveal on Friday. So stay tuned for that. But let's get this out of the way. Fold this up. Time to do some tie-dye laundry again. Let me clean up my area here. And then we'll break out the tapestry and start the auction. But that was fun. Did you guys learn something new there? Did you get mystified? I love it when I have ideas like that to come into my brain. The, I wonder what would happen if. And I always recommend that if that idea comes, that thought comes into your head, that you follow through and try it out. Because sometimes those, I wonder what will happen, is your intuition, your heart, your higher self trying to communicate with you and give you an idea for tie-dye. So, if you ever wonder, I say go for it. Now, sometimes you can't, you know, wonder about what would happen if you jump off a cliff. You don't want to wonder those ways. But if you wonder something creatively, then I say go for it. And whether it's in tie-dye or some other field, to me, that's listening to your intuition and sometimes it's a very quiet little voice and it takes a bit of practice to hear it. Sometimes it's just a little flash, but I promise you from my own personal experience, the more you listen to your intuition, then the louder it's going to get for you. Okay, let me get a drink of water and we're gonna start this auction. Let's see. I see just a statement I might have missed the question. Let me back up a little bit. Yeah, I don't see it. It just says the shirt that you're wearing with a question mark. If you're asking about this shirt here, this is one that one of my tie-dye fans, tie-dye students, one of you Rainbow Warriors made over at Wavy Gravy Tie-Dye, Wavy Gravy Dye Company. He's over on Instagram. You can find him over there. But yes, he, he made this t-shirt up and wanted to send it to me as a thank you for helping him with his tie-dye skills. Okay, so this is the one I did the geode ice die, and I put the infinity symbol in one corner, and I put a heart up here in this corner here, and then just some geodes, and I just went with uh, various shades of purple. This one, bright, really bright one here, is raspberry, and then I used blue violet, and I don't remember the other ones, but. Got some nice contrast in here. So this tapestry is officially up for auction. So you guys can place your bids. If you like it and want it, you can place your bids in the chat box here. And I will keep an eye on that as we go along. Let me break out my gavel so we can close this auction out later. Thank you, Mom, for my gavel. It's worked perfect. And let's see. I think Julie has some more questions for me. Okay, well, I'll just scroll back on the feed then. 
Let me scoot this forward a little bit. Yeah, that. Okay, and we have Tight Eyed One has opened the bidding on the Geo Tapestry at forty dollars. Thank you, Tight Eyed One. <laughs> Shh. Okay, don't tell anybody. Rodna's in love with me. <laughs> I love you too. Oops, I think scroll. Julie heard that. Scroll up a little bit. Let's see. That's where I would start with the sauces, right there. Right. Uh, Carl, what ounce bottle was that? If you are talking about this one here, this here is a four ounce bottle. And this one here is a 16 ounce bottle. These ones here I get from Dharma, but these little ones here, I buy those from Amazon and they got this nice little fine metal tip on them. I've been using them for a year and a half now without any leaks at all on them. So let me put a link. I do have an affiliate link. So if you use this link to purchase, then Amazon gives me credit for the sale. So I will put a link in the box here. So if you're looking for those little bottles, you can buy them on Amazon. And there's a link in the chat room now for that. Uh, let's see. I just want to say thank you for sharing so much of your wisdom with the world. I've learned so very much from you, and you have inspired me to go further and do more and experiment. Oh, that is wonderful, Rodna. I am so glad to hear that. I love to inspire people, and I love to help give the tools to tie-dye because it is a little bit of a tricky art to get started in. Um, I had just really good success and luck with it when I first started, so I, I continued. But I know some people, if they have a couple bad experiences, they, they give up, and I don't want that. I don't want anybody to ever give up. If, if you want to do tie-dye, you should be able to do tie-dye, and I share my wisdom with the world because the world needs to know. So anyways, you're welcome. I'm glad to be of help and inspiration. And let me see here. I really haven't been here many questions today. Yeah, it looks like I, maybe I have, let's see, show, oh, show and tell. Is that what, oh, okay, the shirt I that I was wearing. Yes, show and tell. So, yeah, let's see if I can show a little bit more of this here. So he did a, a nice V on here with some orbs in the chest and then the rainbow uh, pleats down the side. It's a really nice t-shirt. And like I say, this was wavy gravy dye company sent this to me and let me see here i'm going to scroll down we might be out of questions i think we have yeah still just a 40 dollar bid on the tapestry so if you guys want to get a bid in now is the time to do that but where's the best place to buy bulk shirts what type is best uh the best place to buy bulk, it depends on if you have a wholesale account or not. I happen to have a wholesale account, uh, which basically I was able to get because I registered my business name with the state. Or if you have an actual business license, then you can sign up with sanmar.com. Let me type that in. So that is where I buy my t-shirts from wholesale. If you don't have a wholesale account or can't get one, then I know a lot of people use uh, jiffyshirts.com. And as far as what kind to get, I mean, there's, there's so many different styles out there. I decided on my brand probably... 15 years ago, um, I had tried out a few different ones, and I went with the Gildan t-shirts, the Gildan Ultra. They're the 6.1 ounce, so they're a six, uh, a heavier weight t-shirt. Uh, some people like the lighter weight ones. They do, Gildan does make a heavyweight t-shirt, which is, I think, 5.4 ounces. Uh, and those, I've used a few of those. Those are nice. I, I just happen to like the Gildan 
Uh, some people, they get the Gildan hammers. Uh, there's lots of different uh, Gildan brands. But a lot of people, I've heard them, they, they like uh, Hanes. Some people like the Beefy Tees. So it might be a matter of just trying out a few different brands and seeing which ones you like the best. I, I went with the, the Gildan because it seemed to be consistent in its sizing. Uh, if somebody wore a large, they can walk into my booth and buy a large. They don't have to worry about whether it's going to fit or not. I like the fact that they're pre-shrunk. So I wash mine in hot water and they might shrink up just a little bit, but not much at all. So the t-shirt size stays the same and it's consistent. Okay, that's the next one there? Yeah. Okay, should you always add dye when the item is completely dry? Um, that, there, there's no yes or no answer to that. It depends on what uh, fold. Most of my stuff that I do, I fold it up damp and then I dye it damp. And that was what this peace sign was today. Uh, it had a few different layers in there, but I can still do that one damp if it's uh, a multi-layered uh, design or I've tied it tightly with sinew so like if I'm doing a Mandela uh, type of design or anything else that has many layers to it then I will usually fold it up damp and then I leave it sit for two to five days depending you know here in Oregon <laughs> it takes longer to dry out sometimes um, if you're in a hot dry climate it probably dries out faster but yes at those points for those designs I will let the t-shirt dry out before I add dye to it because then that way that the the wicking action of the dye it wants to go into the drier fabric so if all of the fabric and all of the layers is damp then the light the dye might go in so far and then stop me putting the dry clean dry towel underneath helps keep pulling that liquid through um, it because it, as long as it has a place to go the liquid is going to keep moving as soon as you block it off by having dye, so if I put dye on the top, flip it over, put dye on the bottom, that basically has sandwiched a little bit of soda ash in the middle of those layers there. So that's what you want to try to avoid. If you have lots of layers, I say dye from just the top first. And if you can, put it on a clean, dry towel to help it soak down through. If you are going to let something dry out completely, and then add your dyes then what i recommend is having a bottle of soda ash in a spray bottle and just lightly spraying the surface because that's sometimes when you put the dye on it wants to just roll off rather than soak in and that can be a pain especially if the dye rolls into areas that you don't want it but the the soda ash is going to just kind of like it almost like breaks the surface tension of the top of the fabric and allows that dye to just soak straight in. Okay, let me scroll down and see if I have more questions, but also look to see if we have more bids. As far as I know, we had just the one bid. We have a fifty dollar. Oh, we have a fifty dollar bid from Adam. Actually, that says. Uh, 50 yen or something it's a Y I'm not sure how that correlates uh, if if you want to bid you have to bid in US dollars so but also I'm not sure if you're wanting out-of-country shipping that's something that we'll have to figure out if and when somebody wins but if that's a $50 bid then please confirm or something I don't know. <laughs> okay, there's your next question right there, Penis. That's it. Okay, uh, what do you um, what do you do the first wash in? The detergent you have mentioned isn't available in Australia. Um, the main thing I would look for is a pH neutral soap of some sort. A lot of laundry detergents have uh, soda ash in them or they have baking soda in them and that can turn around and reactivate your dyes that are loosely floating around and that's where you get a lot of back staining in the washer. So I know uh, Blue Dawn is a pH neutral soap. Um, there's a carpet cleaner I believe it's called Folex F-O-L-E-X 
that's a pH neutral soap that I've heard people use. Um, I would just find either that or find a, a very mild pH uh, type soap. You don't want to use just a really heavy laundry detergent that has a lot of soda ash in it. You might be able to even look at the label and see if it has soda ash or baking soda. You'd also want to look for sodium carbonate or sodium bicarbonate. Those are the other terms so that you do not want to do your initial washes in. And I would almost think that if if you didn't have access to a low pH soap that I might opt to use no soap, uh, do my initial rinse in cold water, and then I might even dunk that into a uh, bath that has uh, cold water and vinegar in it because the vinegar is going to help neutralize your soda ash and then I would just wash it in just hot water and maybe even add a little bit of vinegar just to make sure that there's no active uh, dye particles in there. The, the, the vinegar is acidic so it balances out the soda ash. But yeah, that's, that's a pain when you, you can't get access to the same soaps that I use. Like I say, I use the Synthropol. A lot of people use Blue Dawn, but it's a matter of finding a pH neutral soap. So I hope that answers your question, Penny. One, yeah, the next one is just right below. And should I store my mixed liquid dye in the dark or will the sun not damage them? Um, I would... I wouldn't necessarily say they need to be stored in the dark, but I wouldn't store them in a place where d direct sunlight got on them. I just have mine out in on my table here. I don't cover them in any way, but also the sun doesn't shine directly on them. I do think that the sun might damage them if every day it shines on your dye bottles. Uh, I know that if I go to a tie-dye party and I put my dyes in a tub and put them out in the car. I make sure I load those up just before I go so that they're not sitting in a hot car before I get on the road. And then when I get home, I pull them back out of the car. The heat is going to be one of the things that's going to shorten the life of your dyes, which is why if you have a fridge to store them in, they're going to last even longer. But no, I wouldn't think that you would need to store them in the dark, just not in the direct sunlight. So I hope that answers that. Uh, did someone make that, make you that Snoopy behind you? It's cute. Uh, no, this was one that uh, I think Julie, did Julie buy this for me? Or I might have found it, but yes, uh, my, my little sister, she was into Snoopy's uh, when we were growing up and she passed away four years ago, I believe. Wow. Anyways, so I, I have a few extra Snoopy items that I have around just to kind of remind me of my little sis. And that's also why I do the, the dancing Snoopy tees. So that's in honor of my little sis. So thank you for bringing that up. I like to talk about my little sis. Um, let me, do you see any more bids on here? No, I have not. Okay, um, I'm not positive that that one thing was a bid. It said 50, looks like yen, and I'm not sure that from Adan. I, I don't know if that was an actual bid, and I haven't seen him post back. So as far as I know, we still have just the $40 bid from Tie-Dyed 1. So I'm going to leave this open for another few minutes, answer another couple questions, and then we'll close this out. So if you guys want to get a, a bid in on this, it's right now sitting at $40. And let's see. Right, scroll down, see if I can put all right there. Yes. Uh, Carl, will the tip from your thick black dye bottle fit on the four ounce needle tip bottles uh no let me break out a few rags here just to make sure i don't splash dye i'll show you this one here doesn't screw on it pops out this one here i got from dharma so it's one that it pops in and out of the bottle where these ones here they screw on and off 
so they they don't correlate there but these ones here are about the same size yeah they are the same size and I think these ones here were either the five or the seven millimeters so the ones that come from Dharma are the same size then okay where do you get the stuff to thicken dye? Uh, I bought some of it from Amazon. It's called sodium alginate. Yeah, somebody answered the question about sodium alginate down the bottom here. Thank you, Saucy. Uh, so yeah, from Dharma, uh, I buy sodium alginate and I do have a video from Dharma, or uh, from the stuff. <laughs> Let me talk here. I do have a video for mixing the thickened dye two different ways. One of the products I buy from Dharma, one of the products I buy from Amazon. The one from Amazon is a finer powder, so it mixes up easier and quicker, but it also sometimes can be feel like a little pastier if you get too much in there and into the dyes. But both of those work. I'm also going to be ordering some Super Clear from Dharma, which is a thickened liquid already that you can just add that directly to your dyes rather than making it. So that's one of the things I'm going to test out. And when I do, I will, of course, make a video and let you guys know how it worked. But for now, yes, the sodium alginate is the, the thing that I use to thicken dyes with right now. I know people have talked about uh, guar gum and other things, but I haven't had any feedback as to how those other things worked. So I don't know on those, but lots of people have tried other things, other type of thickening agents. But let me see. I'll try to remember to post a link. Or, no, actually, probably in the videos, the thick videos. Yeah. Let me just post a link to the video. How about that? So here is a link to the video for the Dharma product or the Amazon product. And then here is the one. This one here has got more stuff in it. And this is the one that I would use if I was going to do any kind of dye painting because I used uh, urea in this one. So those are the two videos, and I do believe I have information on where to buy the sodium alginate in each of those videos. Okay, trying again. My question seems to have disappeared when I got kicked off. Uh, do you have any information or video about putting the shrink stuff on the hemostats? Uh, yes, let me... It might be in... Sunflower. I think I did a demo for that in my Sunflower video. Nope, not that one. So I will put a link to the Sunflower in the chat box here. And I believe in that video I show how I put the... Let me break out one of these. So this here is what she's talking about, the shrink wrap on to the hemostats. Basically what you want to do is cover up, there's usually these ridges on here and they can cut into the t-shirt. So I put shrink wrap over top of these to protect the end so that when the t-shirt is pinched in in the middle there, it's not cutting into the t-shirt. And, I, and really what I do is I just cut a, a length off, I slip it on, and then I use a, a lighter. You can use a heat gun. Uh, I'm not sure if a hair dryer gets hot enough, but I usually just kind of wave it underneath just a little bit, and that shrinks that right up. So, And like I say, I do believe that I put that in the sunflower video that I put a link to. So thank you, Katara, for re-asking that question. Yeah, so I'm not sure what happens with these chat questions. Sometimes things don't show up the same way. That's it. 
Okay, and Deja Vu. Sorry if you already answered. Hiya, Carl. I was just wondering if you could tell me how to catch the live stream of Justin Biffer that you posted about in the Super Duper Friendly Tie-Dye group. Uh, as far as I know, he's uh, doing that on uh, Facebook. I think the live streaming of Facebook. And I had said 6 o'clock. He recorrected me to 8 o'clock Eastern, so that would be 5 o'clock Pacific. So if you go into, let's see, I'm not sure if he's on the Dine to Tie page or the Tie Dye page, but he'll probably be posting, or you could even just go to his profile and he might have some information. Uh, I just, I was just relaying the information because somebody was asking about the wigwag. So I put up my video and then I know that Justin had mentioned he was going to do the wigwag steely on live stream today so that's why i was posting about that but that's really all the information i know on that uh, and that he said he was going to do that live stream on uh, facebook so that's all i have about that your mom did 50 bucks and let's see Okay, great, Marissa. Thank you for answering that. She verified that, yes, it was the uh, sunflower that I posted the information about the shrink wrap. And let's see. I think we got a $50 bid. And another. Do you know where? 251 There it is. Okay. There's one question above there. So we got a $50 bid. For the geode tapestry so I'm gonna probably leave this open for another few minutes so if anybody else wants to bid on this you can go ahead and place your bids down in the chat box and let's see Spirit web. There it is. say you're only washing two or three shirts at a time how much sensor Paul should I use I would use just a just a like a little squirt, just a tiny bit. Um, if you add too much sensor Paul for just a couple t-shirts, you're going to end up with a lot of uh, suds in there, which you don't need. So I would say, I usually put my sensor Paul in just a squirt bottle. So I would just do just a, a quick squirt in there. Uh, the main thing, if when you start your, your washer load, if you see a little bit of suds on, you don't need a bubble bath, but as long as there's just a tiny bit of suds on top of the water, then you have enough. If, if the water just looks dark and flat with no bubbles on it, then I would go ahead and squirt just a little bit more in, add a little bit of water just to see that you have a little bit of soap. Uh, but it doesn't really take a lot of Synthropol to do the wash load there. So let's see. Does Urea really make your shirts that much better? Does what? Urea. Repeat the question out loud. That's it right there. Okay. Does Urea really make your shirts that much better? Uh, what Urea is going to do is uh, the two reasons uh, that I know about for Urea. When you're mixing your dyes, uh, I use it especially like in my black dye. It helps you mix more of the powder into a smaller amount of liquid. So when I'm mixing my black dye up, that wasn't my black dye, this one is. I'm using twice the amount of powder that I do for the other ones. So that's one of the reasons for using the urea. The other thing is the urea is a wetting agent. So it's going to help keep your dyes wet for longer. Uh, if you tie-dye your shirt and you don't put it in a bag or something and it dries out, then the, the bonding action stops. So I use urea sometimes. It's a minimal difference, so it's not required. I mean, right now, I, I don't have any urea in any of my dyes right now. So I, I go back and forth. I use it sometimes, but not all the time. So, yeah, if you're questioning whether you need it or not, I would say, no, you don't need it. It's something that dyers will add for specific reasons. Like I say, one of them is mixing the dye powders. And one of them, if you live in a hot, dry climate, it's really just going to help keep your dyes wet for longer. 
If you're doing dye painting, that would be another reason to use it because usually what I'll do is I'll spray my area with soda ash, let it dry completely, and then I paint on with the dye. And then I usually will put that t-shirt in a tub to try to keep it wet. And the urea is going to help keep the dyes damp also. So if you're doing dye painting, then that's the most important reason I see to use urea. So I hope that answers that question for you. And I that looks like that was, t -t -t I think, the rest of the questions. And I don't see any more bids. So I'm going to close this bidding out in a minute. So if anybody else wants to put a bid on it, now is your time. And then otherwise, we're going to close this out. And let's see. If you guys have any more questions, now is the time. Otherwise, you guys can start saying your goodbyes. Tell all your friends you love them and you miss them. <laughs> I just love this chat room. You guys are so fun to, to watch. I don't always get to watch all of the chatting going on, but I just love this tie-dye community and especially all of the people in this chat room here that just hang out and they help each other. People ask questions. So... Let's see. Oh, okay. We got a question. I noticed a big difference when adding urea to the colors that don't dissolve well. They dissolve much better with fewer to no clumps and little particles dye on the fabric. Yes. Yeah, that's one of the things that urea does. Is it does help the, the dye dissolve. So that would be something else. On I know black is one of them. Red, brown. I think those those are the three colors that I notice when I, I do my blending and then I pour it through a fine filter that there will be some gunk in there. Well, that gunk is dye powder and it all needs to be dissolved and blended in. Uh, if you just dump that gunk out down the sink, then you're throwing away part of your dye recipe. So what I do is I'll take that gunk and I tap it back into my cup, add some more water to it and blend that up and dump it. The urea is going to help more of that dye powder dissolve easier. So she was saying, um, let's see, I think Marissa. Yeah, Marissa saying that she notices that she has less of the gunk in the filter when she uses the urea on some of those hard to mix colors. So that would be something if you're having a, a color that's not dissolving all the way, maybe try using just a little bit of uh, urea in there and she says also raspberry and dragon fruit do that yeah you just definitely want to make sure that you use get all of the I mean if there's just a couple specks that's fine but if there's a coating on your filter that's all dye part dye particles that belong in the recipe to make your color show up correctly I know I've had some people that their their colors aren't showing up the way they're supposed to and I think that might be part of it is if you're throwing that gunk out it's not gunk it's part of the recipe okay let's see my friend uh, acquired three bridesmaids dresses made of rayon in a mustard color they hate it they would love to tie dye over them can you she use bleach to get rid of the original color before dyeing them tie dyeing them I wouldn't use bleach be, uh, uh, for that the bleach might not go down to a, a white uh, with the mustard yellow. There, there's no telling what color it might bleach out to. But also, if you bleach for too long or have the bleach too strong, then the, the you end up with the possibility of getting holes. What I would recommend is using RIT Color Remover. I've just started playing with the RIT Color Remover and I've had black shirts go almost white. So that would be the thing. And let me put up a video here. So if I was going to try to lighten, take the color out, I would use RIT Color Remover and I would probably just do one one dress at a time 
you know put it you have to put it into the hot water i put mine in a pan like say i do the video to show how i did it and just soak it in there and then when you're done all you need to do is rinse it and wash it and then you can soak it in soda ash and dye it um, you can also from the from the mustard yellow you could just add darker colors but there's no telling you know what colors you would get having a yellow base that dark I've dyed light tan light blue light gray and and those are fine but the darker the color is it's going to start interfering with your other colors so yeah use the Rick color remover to lighten that up and then you should be able to tie dye it just fine okay and that looks like the last of the questions. And I didn't see any more bids come in. I think the $50 bid was the last one. So if nobody else wants to place a bid, then we're going to go ahead and close this out. So you guys will have your usual three count, and then we're going to close it. So if you guys want the... Ice dyed geo tapestry. Now is your time to bid. But we have fifty dollars going once. Oh yes, and tie dye and Dawn put up, brought up a good point. Uh, the stuff is smelly. I do have kind of a hot plate type thing that I use uh, to put mine outside. Uh, the the Rick color remover smells almost like uh, like a hair permanent, you know, the home hair perm. So if you have to do it inside, make sure you do it with your windows open, your fans on, whatever. But if possible, do it outside and you'll have uh, less smell to deal with. So we have $50 going twice. Oh, yes. Okay, so the question, not the question, but the comment went on. Re color remover sounds much better. We'll look forward to the video. Uh, she figured that tie-dyeing them over with rainbow would be much better. Thank you to everyone. Oh, you're welcome. And yes, if you're wanting to get um, rainbow color, you will need to take out some of that yellow because it will interfere with like your blue or your purple. So, yes, I think the Rick color remover should help you. Uh, immensely lightening that those dresses up and then as long as you, they don't have to go completely white as long as they're a light color then you'll be able to add brighter colors over top of them okay and I don't see another one so we got $50 going three times do you use only Dharma dyes um, I use mostly Dharma dyes, uh, and that's mostly because I live on the West Coast, and shipping to me is cheap and fairly inexpensive. But I have ordered from Custom Colors, and I've ordered from Grateful Dyes, and just the same kind, the Procyon dyes, and both of those worked fantastic. And I've seen other people that say they order from Procam, which is in Massachusetts. So I say the best thing to do is find the dye house that's closest to you, which is going to be uh, less expensive in shipping, and it will be faster for shipping. So, But yes, I use mostly Dharma dyes on all of my stuff, but that's just because I'm in Oregon. Let's see. Okay, I think that was it. So we have $50 sold. So... Thank you guys for participating in that. Um, and thank you guys for showing up and hanging out with me on this Wednesday. And if you guys can, check out Justin Biffer's uh, wig, wag, zigzag, steelies that he's going to be doing over on Facebook uh, later. It looks like it'll be in a couple hours from now. Uh, oh, thank you, Bob. And let's see. You guys just go out there and have a wonderful rest of your week. I will get this double peace sign washed out on Friday. And we'll get the video up for that as soon as I can after that. And other than that, just send some peace, love, and light out to the world. Because the world needs it right now. We're going through a, a major paradigm shift. 
things don't look like they're getting better, but really things are going to start getting better. Right now, things are just getting revealed and it just looks not good out there, but it's going to get better, I promise you. Keep the faith, stay strong, stay healthy, and send out peace, love, light to the world. I love you guys. You have a wonderful day.